Hi, my name is Sarah Cosgrove. I'm an assistant professor of medicine in the Division of Infectious Diseases at the Johns Hopkins University School of Medicine. I'm also an associate hospital epidemiologist for the Johns Hopkins Hospital. The purpose of this module is to review the use of the Centers for Disease Control and Prevention's National Healthcare Safety Network for CLABSI surveillance in adult ICUs. The National Healthcare Safety Network is usually abbreviated NHSN, and that's how I, how I will refer to it in the rest of this module. The learning objectives for this module are to review the NHSN definition of the central line, to review the NHSN definition of a bloodstream infection, abbreviated BSI, and to review the NHSN denominator definition for calculating central line associated bloodstream rates in adult ICUs. For the rest of the module, I will be referring to central line associated bloodstream infections as CLABSIs. One of the most important components in the NHSN approach to calculating CLABSI rates is understanding what is considered a central line in the system. A central line for the purposes of NHSN reporting is an intravascular catheter that terminate, terminates at or close to the heart or in one of the great vessels, which is used for infusion, withdrawal of blood, or hemodynamic monitoring. In interpreting this definition, it is of course important to understand what a great vessel is. And the great vessels are listed on this slide. They include the aorta, pulmonary artery, superior vena cava, inferior vena cava, brachiocephalic veins, internal jugular veins, subclavian veins, external iliac veins, and common femoral veins. The definition of infusion is introduction of a solution through a blood vessel via a catheter lumen. Critically, the location of the insertion site and type of device are not relevant. What is important is where the catheter terminates. On the left panel are examples of central lines. And again, it is important to emphasize that a central line is only considered a central line for the purposes of NHSN definition as long as it terminates at or close to the heart or in one of the great vessels. Although this list provides examples of several catheters that would be considered central line, central lines, it is not inclusive. Examples include non-tunneled central lines, tunneled central lines, introducers, implanted ports, hemodialysis catheters, peripherally inserted central catheters, and femoral artery catheters. On the right panel are examples of devices that are not central lines. It's also important to note that this list is not inclusive. Examples of devices that are not central lines include pacemakers, because there is no infusion through a pacemaker, implanted cardiac defibrillators for the same reason, and radial dorsalis pedis, brachialis, and ulnar central lines, because these lines do not terminate in the great vessels. There are several important data points that need to be collected to enter data into the NHSN system for the purpose of CLABSI surveillance. For determining the CLABSI rate, it is important to know the numerator, which is the number of CLABSIs in a unit, and, a deno and the denominator, which is the number of central line days in the unit over the same time period. This is expressed as a rate of CLABSIs per 1,000 central line days and can be determined by dividing the number of CLABSIs by the number of central line days and multiplying by 1,000. There is another data element that is requested in the NHSN system, and that is the central line utilization ratio. The numerator for this is the number of central line days in the unit, and the denominator is the number of patient days in the unit over the same time period. First, we'll discuss the numerator. As you recall, the numerator is the number of central line associated bloodstream infections. For the purpose of this module, we will be discussing the definition of BSI in adults 
It is important to note that there are also separate definitions in pediatrics and in neonates. There are two different criteria for BSI in adults. Criterion one is that the patient has a recognized pathogen cultured from one or more blood cultures, and I'll give you some examples of recognized, pathog recognized pathogens in a moment, and the organism cultured from the blood is not related to an infection at another site. Criterion number two consists of three components. The patient has at least one of the following signs or symptoms, a fever greater than 38 degrees Celsius, chills or hypotension, and the patient has signs and symptoms and, a positive, and positive laboratory results that are not related to infection at another site, and common skin contaminant, a, and a common skin contaminant is cultured from two or more blood cultures drawn on separate occasions. And on the next slide, I'll discuss what are common skin contaminants. The definition of separate occasion is that blood from greater than or equal to two blood draws was collected within two days. So just as an example, if you had coagulase negative staph isolated in a blood culture on Monday, and then coagulase negative staph isolated on a, in a second blood culture on Friday, this would not be considered uh, meeting this definition because the two blood cultures are drawn too far apart. The left panel of this slide gives some examples of commonly recognized pathogens for use in criterion one. Again, it's important to note that these, this is not an inclusive list, but some of the organisms that may be isolated that are considered pathogens are Staph aureus, Enterococcus species, E. coli, Pseudomonas, Klebsiella, Enterobacter, Citrobacter, Serratia marcescens, Acinetobacter, and Candida species. The panel on the right side of the screen shows examples of common skin contaminants for use in Criterion 2 definitions. Again, this list is not inclusive. Uh, examples of common, common skin contaminants include diphtheroids, usually Carinibacterium species, Bacillus species, with the exception of Bacillus anthracis, Propionobacterium species, coagulase negative staphylococci, including Staph epidermidis, Viridans group streptococci, Aerococcus species, and Micrococcus species. Another important question that can come up when applying the two criterion for BSI in adults is whether isolates are the same that are drawn from, that are, that are isolated from two different blood cultures. If the isolates are identified to the species level in one culture and only with a descriptive name in the other culture, they are considered the same. An example of this would be if Enterococcus fecalis were isolated in one blood culture and Enterococcus species were isolated in a second blood culture drawn on the same day those would be considered the same organisms. In addition, if isolates are speciated but no antibiograms are done or done for only one of the isolates, these organisms would be considered the same. A corollary question is when are organisms not the same? If isolates have different antibiograms for two or more antimicrobial agents, they are considered not the same. For the purpose of NHSN antibiogram reporting, the category of interpretation of intermediate should not be used to distinguish whether two organisms are different. Another important question in applying the NHSN definition for CLABSI is the timing of the bloodstream infection. For a bloodstream infection to be considered central line associated, the, a central line must be in place at the time of the onset of the event or a central line must have been in place within 48 hours before the onset of the event. It's important to note that there's no minimum period of time that the central line must be in place in order for the BSI to be considered central line associated. Finally, it's important to discuss the location of attribution of the CLABSI. The location of attribution of the CLABSI 
is considered to be the patient care area where the event became evident. Clavsies that occur in patients with central lines that are, patient in, that are placed in non-inpatient areas, like the emergency department or the operating room, are attributed to the inpatient unit. There is an exception, and that's called the transfer rule. If a clavsy develops within 48 hours of transfer from one inpatient location to another in the same facility, the infection is attributed to the transferring location. Thus, if a patient is transferred to a general medicine floor from the medical intensive care unit and develops a clavsy on the first day after admission to that general medicine unit, the clavsy would be attributed to the medical intensive care unit. Numerator data for NHSN reporting is entered on the primary bloodstream infection form, CDC 57.108. The other data that are requested on this form are specific criteria met for identifying the primary bloodstream infection, whether the patient died, the causative organism or organisms, and the organism's antimicrobial susceptibilities. Now we'll discuss how to determine the denominator. For ICUs, the number of patients with one or more central lines of any type is collected daily at the same time each day and then summed. This total is reported for the month on the denominators for intensive care unit slash other locations form, which is CDC form 57.118. Many patients in the ICUs have multiple lines in place at one time. An important component of the definition for central line days in adult ICU patients using the NHSN system is that if a patient has more than one central line, either permanent or temporary, on a given day, the day is counted as only one central line day. So if a patient has a hemodialysis catheter and a non-tunneled subclavian central line, that is considered one catheter day, not two catheter days for the purpose of NHSN reporting. The action items for this module are short but very, very important. You must verify that the infection control group in your institution is collecting CLABSI rates based on the NHSN definitions for what is the central line and what is a BSI. In addition, it is important to verify that both catheter days and patient days are being collected correctly in the intensive care units. Thank you, and good luck in applying NHSN definitions to calculate CLABSI rates. For more information and a more complete description of what this module covers, it is important to visit the CDC's NHSN website where additional information is located.